Hi there, Coach Sage Kande of sagerunning.com here with another running form analysis. Today we're joined by Steven Ganoza, who's a 255 marathon runner. Now usually we do running form analyses with sponsored pro runners, sub four minute milers, sub 15 minute 5K runners at pretty fast paces, but Steven's race pace for a road marathon is about 650 per mile pace, or I'll put that at the metric conversion, kilometer pace there. Steven, tell us a little bit about your background in running. Yeah, so I didn't start running until several years after college. Did my first marathon, not really knowing a whole lot. Uh, ran 340 something, got it in my head that I wanted to qualify for Boston. Spent the next uh, four years getting to a sub three marathon. Finally ran Boston last year. And uh, more recently have been transitioning to trail and ultra marathon. And actually, a large part of getting under a three-hour marathon was, you know, watching your videos and, and following the Sage Running uh, training plan. So if you haven't checked those out, do that. That's a really great progression. So Stephen, he worked hard. He does ultra marathons. He's got a video on his Vermont 100-mile race. He's done 100K mountain ultra trail running as well as triathlons. Uh, but yeah, finally got that ultimate goal of the sub three hour marathon, that Boston qualification. And we're gonna look at his running form at about that race pace today out here on the road. So let's get to it. All right, let's do it. All right, so here we have Steven running at his marathon PR pace, which is about 640 per mile pace or 409 per kilometer pace. That was for his 255 marathon that he ran to qualify for Boston. First thing we look at is stride rate or cadence, how many steps he takes in one minute. Now we have the GPS data and we know he's hitting about 168 steps per minute, uh, which is really good at this marathon race pace. Granted, if you're running a 5K pay race or a, a 1500 meter race or a mile, something shorter, you'd probably be running at a much higher cadence, maybe 180, 190 steps per minute. Uh, and it does depend on your, your height and uh, other mechanics, individual variation, but generally you wanna be close to that 170 steps per minute number. Uh, and he's very close to that. So we wouldn't say it's too slow. He could probably increase it by five steps per minute. Being in the closer 170 would probably be better. And what we see is maybe he's overextending very slightly when his foot is about to hit the ground on impact. You see he's got his toe pointed downward pretty uh, aggressively, but he's also landing slightly in front of his center of mass. Now, usually that's okay. This is being very nitpicky. Uh, he has very good form, but his knee isn't bent a whole lot and he's landing with that foot angled downwards, uh, more of a four foot strike, a little in front of his center of mass. If he was taking a higher stride rate or more steps per minute and his stride was a little shorter, uh, the goal would be to try to get that foot back underneath the center of mass, more, more in line with the rest of his body. So you always wanna be thinking in the back of your head, I wanna get my foot back behind me as quickly as possible on impact. So you don't wanna be reaching out too much with the toes or the forefoot you don't want to be reaching forward with the stride. You want to be think, thinking that your foot is moving backwards as it lands underneath you to minimize impact in front of your center of mass or in front of your body too much. Now, looking at that foot on impact, like I said, it's it's a pretty aggressive forefoot, midfoot type of landing. And knowing a little bit about Steven's history, uh, he has had a stress fracture uh, in his metatarsal, the toe or the top part of his foot. Uh, very common though, because he had increased his mileage, double volume basically in pavement, trying to progress from that 340 marathon to the sub three, upped his volume very quickly. Uh, maybe was running with different mechanics uh, several years ago and it was a lot of stress it's a lot of stress and like I said he has really good form it's physically uh, mechanics are better than my running form at least in, in my analyses that I've done of myself but if he's landing a little too far in front of his body and a little too much up on the toes and I think maybe in previous years when he first started running a lot marathon training he was running almost too much up on his toes possibly. And that's gonna add a lot of stress to those metatarsals, right? Your toes, uh, if they're not used to that impact on concrete, running 100K a week or 60 miles a week, all of a sudden, it could cause a lot of problems. So 
Uh, you know, he could dial it back a little bit more towards the middle part of the foot on impact. Again, it's better than a nasty heel strike out in front of the body. And he's very efficient with the pawback action and getting his legs behind him quickly. But if he's reaching out a little too much and landing too far up on the toes, that is an issue for a lot of stress. And I think this could simply be uh, fixed by just thinking that he's increasing his stride rate to a little over 170 steps per minute instead of the, the 168 steps per minute and not uh, worrying too much about landing on the forefoot um, as you run along. The next thing we look at with the running form is his whole body position in terms of forward lean. You see he's got a nice forward lean here. He's not running straight up and down or perpendicular to the ground, but leaning forward slightly, getting a good kickback uh, with his legs as they after they push off the ground. Uh, the foot action is very good and a lot of action is happening behind his center of mass uh, as he flies through the air really good arm action as well so not too much we'd really want to change there again like i said mechanically in terms of the physics his form is better than my running form and he's got also a very good bounce we call it uh when you spring off the ground basically running's controlled falling and you're bouncing off of each foot but you're activating the glutes or the butt muscles and your calves, the muscles uh, behind your shins and the back part of your leg, and getting some good spring there, some good bounce, but not too much. If you had too much up and down movement or vertical oscillation, that would also be inefficient for a distance race, but he's got a good balance here, I would say. And we could see this in uh, the rear view shots as he runs over the camera there with some moderate pronation, or that's the foot action of the ankle turning inward on impact, but also the foot action as it comes up off the ground. You could see the feet aren't twisting around too much. There's not too much uh, thrashing going on or side to side movement. Likewise, with the front running view, uh, as he's running towards the camera, you could look at the arm action and make sure the arms aren't swinging out from side to side too much. It's more uh, back and forth action with the arms, the hands, and the elbows. Uh, there's a little side to side, which is essential because you are counter rotating basically your shoulders and your hips. They're not uh, perfectly locked in a uh, straight lines, but uh, you know, he's got very good efficient arm carry, arm swing there. Uh, it's kind of low like my arm swing, but it seems to work really well uh, with the rest of his form. So, you know, there's not too much I'd change and he has really good form. Uh, the only time we really want to change people's running form is if they keep getting injured or they keep experiencing a lot of pain from muscle wear and tear while they're running. So keep that in mind uh, as a final note. We list all these uh, mechanics and these numbers like stride rate um, as general rules for proper running form and good running form, but they're not the end all. They don't apply to everyone 100% of the time and there's no guarantee that you won't get hurt in a high impact sport like distance running. It's a very demanding sport. But the goal is to work with your body's physics rather than against it and realize there's a little individual variation and your health depends on a lot of things from sleep and diet and uh, genetics, but also in the types of shoes you wear or don't wear. And, you know, if you balance that, the goal is to run healthy. And then if you could run healthy, you could train harder and get faster and more efficient. But we're all not going to look like Kipchoge while we're out there running a marathon. And it changes over time as we get older or as we grow and train more at different paces. So also keep that in mind. And uh, thanks to Steven for showing off these different mechanics. Again, his form is really good and there's not much I would change now. But knowing that he had... Uh, a stress fracture in his metatarsal in the past it does make sense looking at some of that right foot action so that's my take on his form so thanks for joining me steven and letting me analyze your form hopefully this will be helpful for those of you that are trying to qualify for the boston marathon maybe or even crack three hours in the marathon and you could use uh, these tips to analyze your own running form also, Steven has his own channel. You could check it out, uh, Steven Ginoza. I'll link to it up there as well as in the description below. Thanks for subscribing on here. Check out our website, sagerunning.com, for more training plans and running tips. Hope you're doing well, and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.